Hi, it's Mickey Dolans here. You're listening to Inspirado Projecto. Okay. All right. So, um... So welcome everyone to Inspirato Projecto, and uh, as you know, I've been covering the Harmonic Convergence event. If you want to hear any of those episodes, please um, check them out on Inspirato Projecto. Um, ideally, this has opened up a lot of a lot of doors for many of you who are seeking higher vibrations. Um, all, all of the videos are saved on the facebookcom slash unify page. So if you want to check out any of that stuff. Please, I invite you to do that. And then what we would do each night, we'd have at 6 p.m., we'd have an after party uh, in Zoom. And so I would meet just amazing people. So anytime anyone put uh, their their email into the chat or they had something that really, really resonated with me, I made sure to write down their names, their email addresses. And uh, so I'm, you know, I'm going to chisel right through these and, and, and interview extraordinary people. And so today we have Nikki who knows a lot about selenite, which my sister had gotten me the selenite crystal. And it was sitting up there up on a shelf. And then Nikki, once you started talking about that, I go, holy cow, I got to hold this as close to me as possible. <laughs> and and then um, I've been going to sleep uh, with it each night. And uh, thanks to your suggestion. So... Any I've been having some very lucid dreams, and yeah. um, my my synchronicities have 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 skyrocketed. My manifestations yeah. of reality, it's like it's 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 a true you know it's like an antenna. It's an antenna, and yeah. um, so okay. So I've been looking at your website, and and you've got amazing stuff in your shop. I love the fact that you followed your calling on this, and. You um, you have your story up there. Could you give a, a brief, you know, just give a summary to the folks here as to how you came across the selenite and and when it basically started kind of speaking to you? Sure. I was, um, in 2011, um, I was the owner of a wellness center on Cape Cod um, in Massachusetts, and um, I had, there were 12 practitioners in in the center. So we did Reiki, cranial sacral therapy, massage, yoga, meditation, and people invariably tweet would come in, they would get blissed out, and then they'd roll their eyes and say, now I have to go home. <laughs> so there was a little frustration on my part um, for wanting more than just experiences at the center. Like I really wanted to find something that they could take home with them and continue that bliss, continue their development, their awakening, their opening. So, um, it was 2011, January, I was at the Tucson Gem Show, and I was walking by the little storefronts, which were in the hotel. Uh, People would, if you get a chance to go to the Gem Show, it is amazing. So, the vendors would have rooms at the hotel that they would set up during the days as their storefront. So we were walking by this one room, and the woman outside said, would you like to come in and sit on a spot of selenite? And I was like, sure, why not? And at that point, I could, I had never felt crystals. I had never connected um, intuitively with them through feeling them in my hands. And because I was the center owner, people just expected that I could connect with crystals, and I just, it wasn't one of the things that was on my, my list. So um, I had zero expectations, and so I walked in, and there's a very large lab, probably about uh, 12 inches by 14 inches by 2 inches thick, sitting on a seat, and in front of the seat is another slab nearly as big. So she instructed me to place my hands on the stone and ask the stone to help me release all that no longer serves me, and then to sit for less than two minutes, which I did. And as soon as I closed my eyes, I immediately saw it. It was like looking at the earth after the flood. And water was pouring off very high plateaus of, of land and down into canyons, deep canyons. And then I had a vision of um, a treatment table, like a massage table, and a client laying on four large slabs of the stones. And then 
an energy worker doing um, Reiki or energy work on them. <clears throat> and so when I opened my eyes, I shared with her what I saw, and she said, oh, she said, well, selenite is ancient ocean water, so that's pretty much how it would look when it was starting to be formed, wow. you know, the water coming off the high plateaus. And um, and then she said, I said, well, do, do you sell these to energy workers um, to do their, their work? And, and she said, no, but that's a great idea. So, um, so I the next day went back after thinking about it and feeling about it and purchased more large labs to have them shipped up to my center. And, oh, when I stood up, um, after sharing that with her, every cell in my body was like tingling and vibrating. I, it was palpable. And my jaw dropped. I looked at my friends who I was with and I said, you guys have to try this, try this. So, and we all felt very similar things. We all felt like an exhilaration, yet a calmness um, with it. So I had the um, lab shipped up to my center and I um, started calling my Reiki clients, asking them if they wanted to come in and give it a shot um, that I had this new modality I was trying out. And I had just purchased um, my first set of singing bowls. And kind of communing with the stones, um, it was as if they were asking for the bowls to be played in the session and to also work with the chakras. So that's how I started. Um, that's incredible. You know, it's so cool because, yeah. like, it's it's amazing. It's like the selenite head was was telling you its story that first time yeah. that you met it. It's like you know when yeah. we hear people say, "Oh, put the put the uh, shell up to your ear so you can hear the ocean." It sounds like it was that kind of thing where the selenite was going, "Here's my here's my origin story." <laughs> it was yeah. kind of. And I'm not alone. So many people have had that that uh, instant um, connection with the ocean. So when they're first introduced to them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. When you so cool. when you were on the Zoom and you well, first of all, I just I just love the fact that during this harmonic convergence, you know, when you got so many people whose mission is to be in harmony, in harmony, you know, and to most, most you know, connect with their highest selves with the all that is and then we get a chance to see all these different people in which they have found ways to do that and it's like the superhero it's like a super super team and so it's cool because here was and then you get the you get the synchronicities flowing so fast because everybody is truly in that same it's like they're all listening to the same radio station. And so f for that person to say something about, oh, I've had these visions about building a pyramid, and, and uh, you know, n no surprise to me, yet completely astounding, you happen to be there and you go, oh, you know what? Well, yes, I just happen to know some people who build the pyramids that you yeah. are inspired on wanting to build. And here's a little pyramid that I have, and, and I use selenite. And, oh, my gosh, that sounded, when you when you use that on there, it I could feel it just going, whoa, 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 through it through my whole body. Yeah. And the first time I heard the pyramid, it was like a language. Like I, I had this vague remembrance of that language. Wow. So, so you were saying that you, okay, so that little pyramid that you had, is that made of selenite crystals or is that some, or is so that, what does that mean with? So all crystal um, singing instruments are made of clear quartz crystals which is powdered and then fired into bowls and pyramids. And um, there's even one that's a Merkaba, uh, so it's a double pyramid, um, which is pretty cool. And um, they add other elements to them. So I have like a bowl, singing bowl with quartz crystal base with emerald added to it. I have one with selenite and gold added to it. So they'll, they'll mix the other um, minerals or metals to that quartz base and then form the bowls. Wow. So so that that little pyramid that you had, I think this is just so great, as with any it's great clear quartz. Yeah. Any great inventor, any great experimenter, any anyone who follows the explorations, they're following their heart, they're following the calling. And this just sort of told you, it's like, it's like, here's some chocolate and here's some peanut butter. Let's put it together and make a Reese's peanut butter cup, you know? And you, you put these elements together and, and it just, oof, it's just such nutritious information. You were saying that you put the, the pyramid, you put, uh, you put it over someone's head and, and then you, you go, boom with what was it like a selenite wand or what it, what is that so that is a suede wand it's a um a rubber or plastic center tube 
and then suede is wrapped around it so it's soft. Um, and I'm climbing up to get the pyramid, which is hanging in my room. Uh, yeah, so the first time I heard it, the practitioner was probably 10 feet away from me, and the first time he struck the pyramid, the sound wave shot across the room into my root chakra and went right up. And I was going through a tough time. Um, I had actually stopped doing energy work because I had gotten infiltrated with, um, you know, the other team. And I didn't want to contaminate anybody. I wasn't really sure where the, the guidelines, where the boundary guides were, if mm. you know what I mean. Mm. Um, so I just stopped my energy work because I didn't want to affect anybody else. Well, and I could feel the, um, the almost like holes in my aura, in my aura field, like where I was afraid. Fear had like penetrated. And um, after that night, when he played this pyramid, um, my whole field was completely solid again. I could feel it. And I looked at my friend who I had driven down there with, and um, I said to her, I said, I I'm back. Like, my field is completely back intact. That was amazing. And um, the next day, I had, I was at a jewelry show, um, and five people asked me about my, my events, my meditation events. <laughs> it's like, clearly, the universe is saying, it's time to get back to work now. You're, you're good to go. Ooh. Yeah. What, what, so is this a have you been finding yourself um, you know let's say people come in with various ailments uh, they're just you know maybe not feeling so well or uh, and then you 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 kind of put put their head in the middle of this 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 pyramid and then you tap it and uh, yeah do you want me to do that now oh yes yes let's hear that alright let's see if it translates uh... Whoa! Whoa! I felt I did, I felt that just just go just. <laughs> it was like dominoes through the through my body. So cool! So it was like probably the following year I got back on the road, started traveling again, and um, I was down in Florida, um, and I was doing the same thing. Have somebody sit on a slab of selenite and then you play the pyramids around them in the bowl. Um, and 15 minutes, they're completely cleared. So, uh, this uh, couple asked me if I would um, work on both of them at the same time, and I had never done that before. I was like, sure. So, they sat um, cross legged uh, across from each other, and I was waving the pyramid um, in between them like a figure eight and walking around them. And they were, it was the most beautiful thing. They were both swaying together with their eyes closed. Wow. It was gorgeous to watch. And then when I was done, he opened his eyes and looked at me and he said, that was the most powerful 10 minutes of my life. And he said, do you know what that, those pyramids are doing? And I said, well, I think I know. I said, I know what they did to me. I said, but I can't categorically say that's what they do. He said, they feel the auric fields. He said, I'm able to see people's auras in my own auric fields. And he said, they were stitching and the tears and filling the holes and replenishing the fields. Um, he said, and he said, I've had um, a wound in my side from an old wound from a past lifetime. He said, it completely sealed it up. He said, I've been working on it for years and years and years and could never get the last. 10% he said it's gone. Wow. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. That is incredible. That is yeah, incredible. So confirmed for me, you know, that yeah, that's energetically what they're doing. So selen so the properties of selenite, I've been looking online and I've been reading your website. Now, selenite, it is in a sense a sponge for negativity, huh? It it just soaks well, so, okay, so basically, selenite is emitting negative ions. So it was created by, it is ocean water in a different state. 
So it's still um, emitting those negative ions. As long as you can see the selenite, it's doing that. So I look at it more as like a vortex of energy, uh, transmutational device. And so it, it clears the energy, actually removes negativity um, or it disintegrates it. So it doesn't actually go into the stone per se. Oh. Um, intuitively what I found, it actually gets transformed. I see. So, like the sunlight on water, on a puddle, right? The water is getting transformed into a different state. It's not going into the sun. It's actually turning into... Aha. Aha. Yeah. So it's the opposite way. So that so it's so it's so it's giving you it's it's go it's going into you. It's it's taking away your negativity. Right? Yeah, so it takes away the negativity in the environment, um, in the space, in your body, um, it shifts your emotions, it can uplift the spirit, like you say, you're having more synchronistic events yeah. occur. Um, it opens the intuition. So when I first started making and wearing the earrings, um, I just remember one day I was in a different room from my sister and my daughter, and um, I tapped into both of them, and I could hear their thoughts, and I came into the room that they were in, and I answered my sister's thoughts, and I answered my daughter's thoughts, and my sister was like, I was just thinking that. I said, I know, I could hear you. <laughs> Whoa. So... The- <laughs> The more time that you're spending with the selenite, the, the more it's 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 tuning you tuning you into that, huh? Yeah. So I feel like we're all on this spiritual awakening path, right? We're all going through this opening of our intuition and ability. The veil is spinning for each one of us, but this is shifting it into fourth gear. Working with the selenite, wearing the selenite, having it in your pocket, sleeping with it, it's just making the process happen faster. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so so it's so it's also so it's an amplifier, huh? Is it an amplifier of sorts? Um, I I feel like it is an amplifier. Yeah, I feel like um, when you meditate with the selenite and you connect to other beings, especially, it it definitely bridges, makes that yeah, amplifies the experience totally. Because it sounds like if if the per because what I'm just. What's just popping into my my mind is the the idea that if if someone is sitting on that selenite rock and then you're doing this pure you know you're doing the buzz of the pyramid, it feels like it's 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 kind of helping it's kind of helping move it along. So the the sound vibrations accelerate the electron movement just oh. like sunshine does. Oh. So those little electrons that it's emitting. Uh, move faster in sunlight and with sound, the crystalline sound. Wow, this is just incredible. Now, have you talked to other people who have stumbled upon this? This oh yeah, astounding. Eleven, well, no, no, twenty eleven. So it's been nine years of amazing experiences, and this is all I do. So I, I was doing before COVID, um, up to twenty events a month doing guided meditations with people um, in yoga centers and healing centers laying on, on mats on the floor and we put the long rod of selenite on their torso and two um, massage wands in their hands and then I make um, selenite eye pillows so I put the um, extra chips that I have for making my jewelry into these eye pillows with flax seed and um, that just really opens the third eye crowd chakra Wow, I just love I, this. It's so yeah, exciting that something that just came to you, you know, it, it, you're I finding know, that there's so a similarity cool. of these other people who are also coming across this. Yeah, so there's a guy down in St. Petersburg, Florida, who makes these amazing wands out of the Moroccan selenite. Um, uh, they're curved. Uh, they're almost, they almost look like Egyptian tools, like surgical tools or something, but um, they're just gorgeous. And I was lucky enough to meet he and his wife down when I was traveling one year and uh, the first thing he said to me when he walked through the door, he came over for dinner to my host's house he said, so how long did it take you before you discovered that selenite was sound activated? Oh my gosh <laughs> that's great, <laughs> that's great oh my gosh. so he made uh, these curved shades, or he used to I don't, I'm not sure if he does it anymore um, and he takes resin and make the form with the selenite chips 
And so you lay on these curved chairs or chaise lounges, and he plays the singing bowl. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. So it's totally, it's so amazing because we, you know, we've always, we hear that everything has consciousness and it's just cool that, to know that the Selenite has called these, these various people to, to discover its mysteries, you know, and to, and to unlock all the, all the wonderful stuff that's hiding in there and the benefits. Yeah. And it's been, like, I am so grateful to the Harmonic Convergence because I, you know, I see every week, every month, um, the power of the stones. New people come across my work and buy a piece of jewelry or buy a um, massage wand or um, a coaster and uh, get back to me and say, oh my gosh, this is a game changer. You know, I started using the massage wands and my Reiki treatments on my clients. And and it's it's so exciting, but I, I have felt um, a little frustrated in that I've wanted more people to know and how do I get there how do I do that so just having the opportunity to share this information with so many people through you and Diana and um, the conversation um, it's just awesome so awesome wow it's so interesting because um you know throughout history there have just been these uh, astounding uh uh, epiphanies and connections as to how to better connect with the universe and to how how to better help out uh, humanity and and it, it, it's interesting because it's like it's it's so strange that with each of these times that that these people have gone well look here's this simple solution here yeah. there has been some sort of outside forces that go no nope, you're not gonna you know that's this is this is what we want you to do instead, you know, which is like a whole another complicated thing that that it's like, well, look, this could be solved with with crystals, or this could be solved with herbs, or um, right. you know, the fat of the land, so to speak. Um, like we hear yeah. about the Native Americans, where where the Lakotas, they're saying, look, they're not letting us go up in the in the fields to to get you know to get the berries that that we know can can heal us and and help us out and. It's like, it's, it's so strange. It's so strange. And I love the fact that, yeah, here, here we are. We're able to get this message out and oh. it's going to resonate with people. And to know that this, like right now I'm holding this selenite in my hand as we're talking. And, uh, I was looking at your store and I, I definitely, I definitely want to order, um, a selenite necklace. So I always have it on me. This is, this is kind of a large chunk here. Um, but I would love to be able to have a, uh, a portable one that I could just bring bring with me wherever I'm going. What what are some other interesting um, uh, applications of the selenite that you can imagine would be good? Yeah, so uh, it's interesting as you were talking, I was thinking about the times that I've done like global meditations, you know, with really advanced practitioners and uh, and Native American. Um, uh, elders and they feel it immediately. They they know it. They feel it. They gravitate toward it towards it, um, which is so exciting too. Um, so we have a lot of Lyme disease here in Massachusetts, um, and one of the first things that happened was I'm doing the 12 to 15 minute mini sessions, which are you feel like you've done an hour to an hour and a half session, <laughs> just a mini session. Um, and this one woman had been at, came had the mini session, and then she came to one of my meditation events, which is an hour meditation. And uh, she afterwards she pulled me aside. She said, "You know," she said, "I I have Lyme," and she said, "I I don't know if you're familiar with the term herpsing. It's uh, the um, yes. the die off of the Lyme after you take a treatment of the antibiotics, mm -hmm. and so it's not a comfortable thing. It's can be painful and uncomfortable and so she said that she herpsed the day after um, she did the mini session and she also herpsed after the meditation event and um, so actually yeah she contacted me after the meditation event because it was after she had felt the effects and she wanted to buy a slab and um, so then she bought the large slab and had it in her car so she would commute daily with it and was you know, treating herself but um, yeah, definitely works with Lyme disease. Uh, the handheld, the wand, 
and the palm stones worked for people with arthritis in their hands. Um, anytime I have an ache or a pain, I'll take one of the palm stones and tuck it in, or um, you can use it for like knee injuries with an ace bandage. Um, it accelerates healing of wounds. I slice my hand open. I was in Oregon, uh, far away from my home state, <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Yeah, I'm not going to the ER." And it had gone, gone straight, yeah, through. It was pretty disgusting. But um, I super glued it, and then I put selenite on it <laughs> at night. And um, the next day, uh, one of my friends had an EMT. He actually taught EMT um, training sessions, and um, I saw him the next night. And he looked at it. He goes, "Oh my gosh!" He says, "That looks like it's been healing for a week." Wow. Yep, it's the selenite. Wow. Okay, I got to tell my buddy about this. He He's had Lyme for a very long time, and I'm constantly looking online to try to find all these great alternative you know, things for him. And now that you're telling me about this, I'm thinking, holy moly, I'm going to definitely direct him towards your site. By the way, folks, those of you who are listening, her website is crystalandstonestudio.com. Crystalandstonestudio.com. You can, you can read all about... Nikki's events and and her uh, explorations with selenite and you can see videos up there all kinds of cool stuff and I'm, I'm definitely going to direct my buddy towards that because the, the poor guy he talks about that the herxing and I'm just man I, I can only imagine yeah. what that's like you know and it, it's just so crazy to know that all these natural resources are here just waiting for us to discover them and or waiting for us to, to utilize them so when you um, so you can buy selenite just about anywhere, any stone store, uh, metaphysical shop, some of the yoga studios have them now. Um, but the coasters are cool too. So if you have a piece of selenite that you can use under your glass of water, tea, coffee, um, never beer, uh, wine, it works well with. Um, the beer it just flattens out and ruins it, but um, you can taste it with water. So one of the first things I do when I do educational talks is when people come into the room without saying anything, I, I will say, may I have your, your water bottle? And I'll just put it on the selenite, give it a little pyramid or a bowl, um, and then to accelerate the, you know, the electrons. And they just can't believe it. It totally changes the taste in, you know, 15 seconds. So, but it, it reduces the acidity, so that's what's happening with the lime. Um, you know, lime is very acidic in nature, so oh. it's bringing that into balance. Okay, so yeah, I've always, I've heard that alkaline, you know, like for instance, things like alkaline cancer, diet, yeah. cancer for instance eats, you know, acid, yeah. so if you kind of take that away and supplement it with alkaline instead, um, I can only imagine what this could be like if you're, yeah, you're, you're purifying the water and then drinking it that that way and, and it going through you and then us hearing that water has its own consciousness and... Yeah, yeah. Gosh. And you can use it with, with your food if you buy a big enough lab and Crystalline Phoenix is the name of the, um, the people who own the rights to the quarry down in New Mexico and that's where I get my big slabs from. Um, crystallinephoenix.com and uh, so it's um, Mark Cooper and Trudy Baker are partners in the company and they are so dedicated to raising the vibration of the planet um, they will they travel to Australia um, all over Europe and ridding people's properties and um, yeah very dedicated people and they slice up the slabs in 120 degree heat Oh my gosh! In Texas, it's crazy. Yeah. So what? What other? What other kind of ailments or or like for instance? Uh, I mean, imagining if if this can heal uh, um, uh, wounds so fast. Um, like for instance, my mom just recently got a uh, uh, carpal tunnel surgery on her arm, and um, so if I were to send her some selenite and she were to wrap that, you know, around the the cut. Um, totally. Yeah, it just accelerates the healing process. I feel like incredible, incredible. Yeah. What other really, really good stuff? Like, for instance, let's say people with migraines or or um. Yeah. So sometimes it depends on what is causing the headache. So mm. I would tell people, you know, I this is not an across the board thing. 
Mm -hmm. So some people it works for and some people it doesn't. So like sleeping with the selenite. I think somebody on the call that night said that um, that they it actually kept them up. Oh yeah, right, um, right. Yeah, so you have to test it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a, a for sure thing. So, you know, and some people with arthritis, you know, if their thought form is this is woo-woo and this is not going to help me, um, it's going to have a harder time helping them. Um, but if somebody's open to receiving the energy, then it will help them. Right. It's in my opinion. Right. As it's been said, we, we, we have to uh, open ourselves up to being in that vibration to actually recognize that vibration and to uh, sort of really cooperate with it, huh? Yeah. And sometimes, like, you know, when I was traveling, my I, both of my daughters were in college, so there were emergency banking situations. And so when I got home, I went to my bank, and um, two of the women who would help me, um, I said, you know, I'm... I brought in my jewelry and I said, please just pick out a tenant for yourself as a gift. And um, so they were like, oh my goodness, it's so nice. So they put, picked out little tenants, little ones, and they put them right on. And I went, oh, I said, you may not want to wear that um, all day. I said, if you start feeling funny, uh, just know that that's normal. Uh, the first time you wear selenite, it can make you a little, a little uh, lightheaded. So they just kind of looked at me like, She's a strange one. And I left, and 15 minutes later, my phone rang. And they're both giggling. They're like, we feel like we had a glass of wine. We didn't believe you. We thought you were crazy. How could a little stone do this? But, oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's <laughs> a... What, gosh, that's, cr that's so yeah, cool. So, yeah, they don't have to believe it. And, uh, but that being said, I think that there is something, if somebody's resisting, Energy. Oh, right, right. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, right, right. If somebody's like, yeah, no, this isn't gonna, so they're in there, they're, they're overriding um, with their energy and thought form. Wow, I've just learned so much during the Harmonic Convergence, so many just amazing, amazing uh, healing aspects and uh, so many possibilities out there that I didn't even so exciting. know yeah. could be out there. Man. Yeah, so exciting. So last night we got on the conversation of communities. <laughs> so somebody started it by saying, you know, I want to talk about uh, community living. And all of us were just like, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, we want to live together. You know, it's so interesting. It's so funny because when I, when I was, I remember growing up and, and having the dream of wanting to live you know, either in a, in a, in a castle or a mansion or, uh, something where, you know, it's a bunch of just, just, you know, good, good vibes, artists and, and creative types and everybody working yeah. with each other on their projects, you know? And it's funny cause throughout life I've come across and it's no surprise, high vibrating people who have for the longest time had those dreams as well, you know? And, and I realized, well, yeah, a village, a village of those kinds of people. Yeah. And so it's so cool because these people are being brought together and holy moly, can you just imagine, can you just imagine? Oh, it would be complete bliss. Oh boy, yeah, having, oh my gosh, everybody just, you know, in that, in that harmony and, and, and learning from each other and then applying all of that knowledge right. that they've learned from one another. And oh my gosh, it's like having the, uh, it's like having that, uh, that kind of, uh, ingenuity of building the pyramids all over again. There's... Have yeah. you have you read any Dolores Cannon books? I, well, I haven't read her, but I know of her, and I've heard her speak. Oh, yeah. she is so love great. Her. When I came across her videos, it's it, I was like, okay, I've yeah. got to read her books. And then I started reading Convoluted Universe, and it's it's so, so great when they're talking about how... It, how um, the, the pyramids were built and it's all about you know crystals and and using their minds and and you know uh uh it just accelerating you know they're levitating these rocks and it's crazy when you hear so many examples of these stories from so many different people that she's brought under through hypnosis and into past life regressions when you hear so many of these commonalities and you go okay you know this maybe isn't some you know maybe this isn't to be ignored maybe this is something to to look into and to uh to, to dive deeper into. It's, yeah, I mean, I've had remembrances and meditations um, of flying in the capstone of, of the Great Pyramid, like being in there with 
against other people. And I also remember I when I first started playing the pyramids, I remember I had the remembrance of being either in Liberia or Atlantis, and um, I would be playing them, but they'd be floating in the air. I wouldn't have to hold them. Oh, oh wow! 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 Now, have you have you had visitations? Have you seen crafts or or uh, talked to beings? I um, so I connected with the angel um, when I was about fourteen. Um, my two of my brothers are Jehovah's Witnesses out of seven of us, and um, they were in the kitchen talking one day. And I walked in from school. I'm the youngest. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, oh, we're just talking. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, where am I getting? <laughs> and they start telling me about the book of Revelation, the Bible, and, you know, how if you're not a true believer, you're going to perish. And then they they talked about the angels coming down and battling, the good angels battling the bad angels. And my only thought was, oh, I want to help the good angels. <laughs> <laughs> you know, never mind me coming in. Right. Right. And they were like, I think she missed the point. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so I had a dream of angels in 1999 that was in just so lucid and profound, and it just rocked my world. I was graphic designer at the time. Woke up in the morning uh, and just. Had, it was a vision of these large paintings that were so lifelike, and the angels were interacting with you. Like the, she was looking down at me, and you could feel her majesty and her grace and her energy and power. And I was just like, "Whoa, that's how angels should be painted." Um, you know, historically they've been painted interacting with people in the painting, right? Mm-hmm. They're looking at somebody in the painting. And uh, this was just, you know, straight on, I'm here for you, let me help you. <laughs> and, yeah, so I, it took me a while, but I got set up, shifted gears to doing fine art, which was not an easy thing, buying big canvases and painting. And, um, yeah, so I started that, and then the following year I had a psychic reading, and the psychic, um, my father had come through in the reading. It was 120% dead on. I would think something. The psychic was telling me what he was saying and my thoughts, which he couldn't hear, right? And um, so she said, oh, your spirit guide's here, and you're going to have visions, and don't be afraid. It's going to be a really good thing. And I'm like, what? Spirit guides? Like, how does that work? And how many spirit guides do we have? And went home that day and came up with the idea of painting um fair guide paintings for people, like combining the visions, if I were going to have the visions with my artwork, like how cool would that be? So, when people were in despair, they could look at this painting and know that they weren't alone, that there was somebody there. Um, You know, I'd gone through a really bad divorce and had reached that, just is really there anybody there because I've just been struggling for so long and don't, you know, my babies were... 15 months and two years old and I was working three jobs and life was very, very challenging. Um, So I remember feeling that despair and I thought, oh my gosh, if I could help people in that place in their life with my artwork, that would be amazing. Um, So... I love that. that. It's so cool because on your website it was saying that you had the vision of painting these uh, what like eight foot tall by four feet wide, like twelve of them. Yeah. And then you ended up. A while. (laughs) Well, and then you ended up manifesting twelve people who would help you out at your place. So so I thought that was really cool. It seemed like those were the angels in disguise. Ah, good point. Yeah. So you you were gonna paint? Did you end up painting those? Did you? I, the 12. So it's, you know, what is time? Right, right. right. No, I, t- I know what you mean. I, I love painting. I love doing acrylics, and I can only imagine. I've never painted something eight feet tall, f- four feet wide. Usually it's like a nine by 16 uh, canvas, you know, uh, nine inches by 16 inches. I've never, never uh, uh, tried or attempted uh, something that, that, that big or, or that wide. So I, I commend you and anyone who is... Uh, who is able to even just finish one painting that that huge? It, 
It's just a bigger brush, that's all. Jeez. Right? It's the same process. It's actually easier to paint bigger. Wow. Yeah, it's actually easier. It's more challenging to work small. So, uh, are you painting these in your... St- how, where do you have space? How the heck do you find well, space not, to do that? So, I don't have space. Um, the project um, dissolved, um, and that's a long story. That will be in the book. But, um, yeah, so, as soon as I met, was introduced to someone, I, I shifted gears. Mm-hmm, I, this mm-hmm. was what I was looking for, and um, it was just such a powerful medium. I, I do paint little angels on the on the rocks. I saw those. Um, those are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> those are great. Very uh, colorful. I I love the rocks that look like they look I mean, you've done a great job in making these things look th- like the they look like little eyeballs, these little bubbles, these little bubbly eyeballs and they look they they actually look like like wet. They look like they're like they're like they're they're actually three dimensional on these rocks. You you do a great job with, with uh, Thank you. playing with those paints on there, and I can totally tell that you're you're just you're, you're guided. You know, there's a there's a vast difference between seeing the artwork of an artist who is surrendering to the vibes that are being given to them, um, rather than an artist who is over analyzing every little millimeter of the way that they're going, and and then, and then you that. It, it, it come across it comes across as forced you know uh, but someone who is guided someone who is just kind of um, going all right you know what where do you want me to go you know where do you want me to go universe yeah. with this thing and and then you just go and you do it and before you know it you you then become just as surprised by your own artwork <laughs> you, right, you, exactly. you know like I feel like pick up one of the, so the beach stones I get uh, you know the Atlantic shore on the east coast and um they hold so much energy that when you feel the stone, so I have my first show um, on Sunday, so I haven't had a show since March, the beginning of March, um, so that people can actually feel the work, Oh boy. Um, which is important, yeah. yeah, so I'm really excited about this weekend. Oh my gosh, I, you know, what's, what's popping into my brain, and you probably are, are already, you know, 43,000 steps ahead of me, but I'm, I'm imagining, um, you know, as you were saying, um, which I want to get to after I say this, uh, you, were, you were saying that your bed, you know, the outline of it is selenite. So I was thinking, my gosh, how, how neat would that be is to have the paintings and, and the frame would be made out of yeah. selenite, you know? So then that's kind of like yeah. amplifying that, that spirit that's on the canvas. It's so funny because uh, yesterday, uh, one of my Facebook friend, I think she's in England, um, was making mirrors with the selenite coming out like a starburst. Ooh. The selenite rod. It's just beautiful. And I thought, oh, I could start doing that. I have plenty of the Moroccan selenite. Oh, so the Moroccan selenite, this is a cool thing. Um, so, you know how people say, don't get selenite wet? Oh, yes, I was selenite. reading about that. Yeah. The Moroccan selenite is was formed, you know, hundreds of millions of years ago by precipitation of ocean water. So very fine layers of that water with air and um, kind of layered in with it. So they're more fibrous. They're not as dense as like the New Mexico, the Utah, the Arkansas selenite. So those types of selenites were formed by a piece of the ocean that became landlocked. So you have deeper water condensing and dehydrating into the crystals, and so they're denser, um, they're clearer, and they're stronger. So you can get those wet. Wow. So most, most of my jewelry is made with the New Mexico or Utah selenite. Oh my gosh. That sounds so appealing to me. And I was reading that selenite actually cleanses other crystals if you wave it around other crystals, because yeah. they say that crystals yeah. usually you gotta, you, um, you gotta, you know, clean them. You gotta, you know, to kind of yeah. get off the bad vibes and whatnot. But but the selenite, the cool thing about the selenite is that you just go, you just kind of wave it around it, and it will actually yeah. cleanse that crystal. So a lot of my jewelry is made with other stones with the selenite, so you don't ever need to clear. Incredible. That jewelry. It's always that amethyst clear and opening your crown, you know, oh, without man. your bad day or anybody else's bad day affecting the stone. 
wow. I mean, this is just incredible. You know, it just makes so much sense that having a selenite uh, uh, coaster and then putting your water on it in a way that it'll just completely morph the water into this purity, it totally makes sense that here we are holding oh, on a selenite and then it would do that for the water within our own body. Gosh. Uh -huh. It's just so fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you can take a metal container, a plastic container, it doesn't matter. It still changes. It's crazy. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So it's a testament. I love the water test um, because it, it's evidence that, yeah, there's something going on here with this crystal. Um, a lot of people can feel it when they hold the piece. Um, you know, they can feel the vibrations of the stones. And then when you play the music, it's like hyperdrive. Wow. It is so cool <laughs> that you were guided to to add those two aspects together and you know because we've we've heard through all the all the ancient times the the, the those uh, those you know those uh, those singing bowl is that what they're called singing bowls the the bowls that yeah. Yeah. you know you, you, you got the yeah and so throughout the years of just that calming effect and it's just so cool that you were led to combine those aspects together and uh, wow, I am man. so grateful I can't even tell you yeah it's just been the best thing ever Man, it's so great because as I'm looking at this, it's so fun because it's it's almost like like as I'm looking at this, you just see the the translucence of this. You can see all the layers and the textures hiding within it, um, no different than the layers within a when you're painting. Um, you know, uh, you you might start painting the canvas with purple, and you know, 18 layers later, you, that purple still shines through in its own way. It still comes through, even through the top layers. And it's so interesting as we look through this. Uh, as I'm looking at the selenite, it's like it just feels to me like a like a like a sim symbolic representation of like parallel universes and and other dimensions. And uh, so it makes total sense that uh, it it would heal us in in those same ways. Gosh. Yeah, it's so cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. So, so, um, okay. So, so, for instance, so, what, what are some suggestions that you would say for people if they wanted to, uh, you know, get selenite and and start falling and and start going to sleep with it? What do you think would be some good preparation that maybe, um, they could think about? You know, what some intentions maybe that they could think of before falling asleep with it. Yeah, I mean, we always say, help me to release all that no longer serves me. So, um, you know, you don't want to let go of the lessons that we need to go through, right? That will serve us. Mm -hmm. So, I like that phrase, or may I awaken. Help me to awaken. Because then you're not, um, you're not getting rid of, you're not fighting the courage right yeah because so say you know say i um tripped and fell and something happened and, and in the course of that it altered my life in a certain way i wouldn't want to protect myself from the trip and fall because i needed that to get to the next level so um i wouldn't say to the selenite help me to not fall mm. because right that's part of my learning and my and my journey so when you say, help me to let go of all that no longer serves me, you're kind of framing it in a way that you're accepting the responsibility of all that does serve you, whatever that may be. Wow. Wow. So you're in it for the soul level. You're not in it for the comfort or the... And that being said, I mean, the natural evolution of it, if you could slow down, right, for all of us on the path, the more we slow down and contemplate when we get triggered, when we get upset, and ask the questions, why, why am I upset? How am I defining what just happened to me? Oh, well, they weren't respecting me, or, or, you know, they were a jerk because blah, blah, blah. And so you identify the story, and then you turn the mirror inward, right, and say, do I, have I done that recently to somebody else? Or am I not forgiving myself for doing that? Or, you know, how, how, how am I, how, why is that showing up in my life? And we reflect upon that and we tweak ourselves and adjust our, our perception of life and our behavior, right? And then that problem all of a sudden just 
disappears. It's just not there anymore. Wow. You know, things that irritate, like when I was traveling a lot, you know, it always seemed like somebody was on my bumper, somebody was telling me, oh, I can't believe it, pull over, let them go. You know, and eventually, I just forgot about it. It's just like, oh yeah, it's okay. You know, they must be in a hurry. And now, hardly anybody tells me. You know, it's just gone. Yeah, right. Right? Gosh. So, when we learn to be more peaceful and in harmony and in that synchronistic vibe, right? I mean, it's just so cool living like that. You know, I can remember traveling, I wouldn't look at the clock, I wouldn't really look at the weather report even. And uh, I remember one, one time I stopped at a hotel and uh, I turned on the TV and the weather report was there and I looked at the map and don't you know, it was like a pie shape of clear weather. And I was right in the center of that pie shape, and all around me was <laughs> bad weather. Wow. And I just laughed. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh my gosh. And it was just, you know, you wake up when you get woken up by spirit, and you get on the road when you feel like you're going to get on the road. And then, yeah, it's just an easy journey. You know, it's beautiful. It's, 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 um, Leading your life by intuition rather than the the outside uh, illusions yeah. of um, what it may or may not look like. It's it's really quite fascinating how how that works out. It's funny. Anytime I'm in a car with people, I, I always have good parking spaces. No matter what they may say, I I you know I kind of imagine like I'm casting a spell. I'm like, all right, you're, you're just gonna just reveal yourself. You're gonna reveal yourself, and then sure enough. It's it's just amazing how that can, um, when you when you open up to it, when you invite it into your conversation, when you invite it into the co you know co creation of your of your, your reality experience. Oh my gosh, it's just amazing to see how the universe can really um, show you what what it can do, what it's capable of. So cool! I love doing that, and I love to you know when you become more intuitive and sensitive to other people. Um, the ease of the communication because you're not just hearing their words you're hearing the fear behind the words you're hearing uh, what's needed in the conversation and you can respond to it and, and help them um, in ways that you couldn't before if you're just responding to the words Right, right, because because it, it, it's communicating from basically where the root of where that's coming from rather than looking at the branches and the and the and the leaves uh, you're kind of going, okay, what's, you know, where's the root of this kind of growing from, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, we got just a few minutes here before this uh, this kind of uh, uh, just um, stops on me. Are, is there any more, um, uh, any any special yeah. things you'd like to, mo uh, you know, point All people right. towards? I would love to share um, a really cool book. So along the journey, you know, when you asked me about meeting um, other people that were totally connected with the stones, one mm -hmm. of them is Leela Hutchinson. It's L-E-E-L-A and Hutchinson, um, Hutch, and then I-S-O-N. And she was the first woman to enter the Cave of the Crystal Giants, which are the largest crystals found to date on the planet, and they're so nice. And so I contacted her before a radio interview because I wanted to find out what people were experiencing um, in the cave. And very few people have been in it, and they've since flooded it. But she wrote a book called Journey into the Giant Selenite Crystal Caves of Mexico. And it's a great book. Mm. It's, um, it's short, and it just um, goes into her journey about uh, her adventures with Selenite. But what I knew, you know, I said to her, I said, I know how people feel meditating with, you know, a few pieces of selenite in an hour. I said, I can't imagine how you felt in the Cave of the Crystal Giants. She said it was like being on an ayahuasca trip. She was like, it hits you immediately, and it's like a download of so much information. She Ooh. said it took her two years to sort it out. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. I'm getting images of the, of the, um... Uh, I think it's called the Fortress of Solitude that Superman goes to. I'm getting images yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah, that's totally what it looks like. Oh, yeah. oh boy, oh boy. And they, National Geographic went in there and they did DNA testing and they found two strands of DNA that uh, one was from a very rare strand only found in Africa and the other 
was not found anywhere on the planet. <gasps> oh boy. Oh yeah. boy. Oh, that excites me so, so much. Oh, that excites me so much. I love hearing stories like that. Oh man, I am just buzzing. Such a gift. This is yeah. so good. Oh, <laughs> thank you for giving me the gift of this and, high vibrating conversation. Oh, this is so good. And can I say that I'm convinced that this is where the phrase to get stoned came from? Ooh! <laughs> ooh! Hanging out with selenite. Ooh! You feel like you're stoned after the meditation. It's just like crazy. Oh my gosh. So oh my funny. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Whoa. This is good. Oh, okay, so when we build that community, we got to make sure that we have like a selenite, um, um, you know, like like just like a fortress of solitude that we can go, <laughs> we can go in yeah. and powwow and really just download those those good vibrations. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so uh, Crystalline Phoenix makes uh, dining room tables out of those flaps. Like they harvest huge pieces oh. um, Yeah. Oh he boy! Really oh them. boy! Could you imagine just how much more delicious those meals must taste? <laughs> right? Oh my gosh! Totally. You're <laughs> eating. Talk about you are what you eat. You're actually eating these these high vibrating, high vibrating, um, deliciousness. And oh, oh man, that's just incredible. Wow. Well, Nikki, thank you so much. And uh, once again... Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Oh, this is so Such good. It's a pleasure, and I love your work, and I'm so happy that we connected. So, folks, go to crystalandstonestudio.com. You've got to check out... you got to check out her art. you got to check out her story. you got to check out the videos and just let yourself be mystified. Because chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, um, you're, you're guided to it. Because I don't... T- I, I'm, you know, this podcast is about you know, what others might consider fringe, um, and yet what others might consider consider just completely normal and stuff that their culture has known for millennia. <laughs> so yeah. it, it's like, you know. And on, on my Facebook page, um, there's a, if you scroll down, there's a meditation on there that um, I did when we were starting the COVID journey. And um, so it's about 45 minutes. Of, um, me playing the bowls and guiding you through a chakra clearing meditation. So, oh boy! Yeah, we'll oh, play with that. I totally <laughs> am. Oh my gosh! All right. Thank you, Nikki, so much. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kurt. All right. Well, All you right. you take care. All right. Bye bye now. All right. Bye bye. Holy moly, folks! Yikes! 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 Can you feel? Can you feel the vibrations? Oh man! All right. Um. Oh boy. Oh boy, get yourself some selenite, okay? Um, wow, wow, I'm buzzing. I was holding on to this the whole time during this conversation. Oh man. All right, well, uh, we'll, we'll be back with more later. Take care. This is Blythe Baines, and you're listening to Inspirato Projecto.